amazing. So that's the thing. We're programmed to think you have to list and sell a house mm. or you have to rent a house. Mm. And that benefits the banks because the banks are running the country and they need us to go borrow money and get a mortgage and keep that cycle going yeah. to keep them afloat. Mm -hmm. If more people did what I did, the banks would suffer and die and they can't let that happen. Wow. So they embed it in your brain forever and ever, amen, that the only way to buy a house is to get a mortgage wow. and put more than what you currently have mm -hmm. into it, which is ridiculous. Wow. Um, you know, and mortgages are only like 70 years old. Hey there, welcome to the Ask Ferris Show. Good God Almighty, guys, it's been uh, a long time coming. I'm so excited about today's guest. Today's guest is Whitney Nicely. Just nicely, looks just like it is nicely. <laughs> she is a uh, uh, entrepreneur, but specifically, she focuses on real estate. She's been coined as the queen of the South, the real, the real estate queen of the South for East Tennessee, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna call her the queen of the South for real estate because she's doing some phenomenal things in the real estate industry. And I just want you to go through and hear her heart, hear her story, and just hear her, her journey in this real estate, um, in this real estate business. So with that being said, Wh Whitney, welcome to the Ask Ferris Show. Take a few moments to go through and introduce yourself. Tell a little bit about yourself, some hobbies, a little bit of background, and we're gonna start our dialogue. Um, all right. Hey, my name is Whitney Nicely. I, I want to let everybody know that I am a broker for Whitney Buys Houses, but I don't list houses. I don't do open houses on Sundays. I don't do the regular real estate rat race. I buy houses. I do lease options, owner financing, subject to. Uh, sometimes I pay cash and then I sell it on a lease option. So I do the weird stuff in real estate. <laughs> nice. But I am licensed, fair warning, I am licensed. <laughs> licensed. She's a she's a real estate agent. But but uh, one, one thing the one thing that really attracted me to you because even though you're a real estate agent, you're like I again, you don't really do that type of thing, but um, you, you, you've really disrupted this industry and I love that. I love when entrepreneurs actually take a moment to disrupt industries because we've seen uh, the communication industry disrupted. We've seen mm -hmm. the transportation. Look at Uber. They disrupt the industry, but you actually, East Tennessee, East Tennessee, little, like what, what, what part of Tennessee? I know you said East Tennessee, but where are you originally from? Uh, I'm from Powell, Tennessee. Okay which is pronounced P-A-L. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna ask you a question. How did you get, like, why real estate? How did you get started? Is it, were you born into the, the, to the, to the, to the family of realtors? Like, what, how did you get started in this industry? I am, I'm from the family of anti-realtors. Mm. Wow. And then I got a real estate license. Uh -huh. Like, we, my family has been real estate investors since, like, the 40s, oh, wow. 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. We've been buying property on the wrong side of Knoxville okay. <laughs> for 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. And my mom has always been a real estate investor. I remember when I was a kid going to Saturday auctions wow. and buying property. Wow. I remember walking through studded houses when I was little bitty. Wow. And mom saying, this is the water line. This is where the power is going. This is where the washer is going to go. What do you think this room is? Mm -hmm. Like. My mom taught me when I was a kid wow. what most of my friends and my students mm -hmm. want to teach their kids. Like they wow. realized that their mama didn't teach them that mm -hmm. like my mama did. So they want to learn from me how to teach their kids so that their kids will be better real estate investors. Wow. So I, I am from a real estate investor family not a realtor family. We don't like paying realtors. Wow, wow, wow. I, I like that. And, and we're going we're gonna to go back to this because I like how it was pretty much instilled into you as a younger child and you were able to go through and learn a lot of things because as children, we soak up everything. And I know you can recollect a lot of memories and a lot of, a lot of stories along the way that you're actually utilizing today as well. But before we go there, I want to go through it because as a real estate investor, like everyone knows, like everyone sees like the I buy homes and all these different signs as well. So specifically, what do you do as a real estate investor? So I, oh, a lot of times when I do my lease options, I work with sellers who thought they wanted to be a landlord, mm -hmm. they got tired of being a landlord, mm -hmm. or they accidentally became a landlord. Wow. And they're just not cut out for it. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, like I call them a bridge landlord. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, when you graduated college mm -hmm. or your friends graduated college, 
they got a little two bedroom, one bath, mm-hmm. then they got married, and then they had a kid, and the house wasn't big enough. So that they, they didn't sell the first one, they just bought the second one. Uh-huh. And it was a three bedroom, two bath, and it was okay. Correct. And then yes. Three or four years later, they had another kid and mm-hmm. two more dogs, and they needed another four bedroom, three bath house. Yes. Right? But they've got these two in the back. Mm-hmm. And so they've just bridged their life mm-hmm. from house to house, mm-hmm. but they got these two in the back, and they thought, oh, it's okay, honey, we'll just rent those out. Wow. Well, at some point, you know, mom and dad got sick, the kids were in ball, and there's just not enough time to work and keep the whole family together and tend to these houses. And these tenants have problems uh-huh. and they want to do this. And then the house goes empty and then it sits empty for a couple of months because we're just too busy to deal with it. Yes. Like those landlords call me. Wow. They're not behind on their payments. Mm-hmm. I hate the F word, foreclosure. Oh. I don't deal with the F word. Exactly. And they just are tired of dealing with these properties. Like it, th- they thought it was going to be a good idea mm-hmm. and then life happened and it's just not fun anymore. And instead of listing it and selling it and just being done with it, mm-hmm. they need something more immediate because we're in a hot market right now, but mm-hmm. that's not always the case. And some of these houses need a little bit of tending to Yes. and they don't want to tend to them. So I do that. Wow. And I, I take over the payments. Usually it's three months before I make the first payment. Because exactly. I have to tend to these properties. I have to put somebody in these properties Mm -hmm. and I have to make some money. Mm -hmm. So it's three months, but they've usually had the house empty for three, six, a year. Wow. Wow. So three more months doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And most agents, if you were going to list the house, even in a hot market, Mm -hmm. an agent is not going to tell you they're going to start making the payments in three months. And and, and I'm going to stop right there because I I think so many people, they look at real estate as in, in one lens. Oh, the only thing I can do is actually list my house and sell it through the MLS or through a realtor, but they really don't realize they have options. And sometimes this may be a better option than to go through because some houses sit on the market for, oh, years. I know you've probably been in the industry for a long time. You've probably seen market uh, houses on the market for a long time, but having someone come in that knows this in- industry well, and I think that's where your expertise lies as well, is you're not just kind of saying, you know what, I want to try this. You've really invested in that and you really know your market. And I think this may be a viable option as well for many people as well. This is really good for people who owe as much as it's worth. Mm. If you owe what your house is worth or you owe close, you mm. have basically no equity in mm. it, you're going to have to pay your agent. Yes. Who wants to do that? Who has money to bring to the table to pay an agent to put it on the MLS and then sit back and drink their coffee? Wow, wow. Th- these are nuggets that, <laughs> that, that are being dropped. Whitney, you know what? Like, because... Uh, Cause I, I, have a, I have a background. I, I, we we talked. I invest in residential real estate, commercial, and everything. But you're you you have really invested the time to really know this industry. And so many times, people, I I will raise my hand. I jumped into it. I didn't know anything about this. I didn't I didn't understand it. And that's I know. I think that's where your expertise lies is actually understanding the ins and out. And you and I I've, I've, I've looked at your products and I looked at your 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 trainings and your courses. They're very detailed. And I think that's what a lot of people, especially those who are serious about this industry they have to go through and get some insight on that but we're going to get to there I'm, I'm, I'm just really loving the direction that our conversation is going because it's so important for individuals to realize that hey real estate is, is definitely viable but it's viable for those that have a knowledge in it and that those that know how to strategically work it as well absolutely and it doesn't take a lot of money you know when you and i were at that conference i got on stage and told everybody that it was Saturday that I got on stage to do my elevator pitch. And yes. on Friday, while we're at this conference, mm-hmm. I bought a house. I bought an $80,000 house for $480. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So hold up. You bought an $80,000 house for how much again? $480. $480. And that's one thing I want my listeners, because so many times people are looking to either first-time homeowners or investors and they think, oh my lord, there's only one way. I have to play. I have to play the credit game for three or four years. I have to save um, five, three percent, whatever it is. I have to go through and do this. In which those are good things, but it's not the only option. You so tell, kind of, kind of give us an overview of of that particular um, in, investment property or property that you purchased. Kind of give us a, a broad overview of that. So, I, what I didn't say on stage is that I've already bought this house once wow like this is the second time i've gotten this wow house. so what the deal is these people are um living in this house mm-hmm. and their mama or daddy or somebody gave them some land mm-hmm. and they watched a youtube video on how you can build a house out of sandbags for like no money like six oh. grand or oh wow the whole house okay <laughs> so they decided that they want their their life dream their goal in life is to move to 
daddy's farm uh -huh. and build this sandbag house and live there forever and ever. Amen. But they've got this other house. Yes. And they don't want to deal with it. And so in the beginning, the first time I bought it, it was in February and I got the contract to buy it on Friday morning. I started advertising it Friday at lunch, Friday afternoon. I had somebody go look at it and wow. send in an application. Wow. My guys that do my applications don't work on Saturday or Sunday, but they brought me money on Monday morning and oh said, God. we're going to get this. We're going to make the application work. No matter what's wrong with it, we're going to get this done. They brought me $5,000 on Monday morning, Monday wow. afternoon. I had their application back and they had bad credit, but uh -huh. lots of people do. Like exactly. 80, that's a side note. Let's go back to that in a second. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so they brought me $5,000 on Monday afternoon. And on Tuesday, my attorney had the paperwork back. We signed. I gave them the keys. They moved in. From Friday to Tuesday, I made $5,000 on a house that I had no money in. Wow. So what I did was I, I got the $5,000. And I told my sellers that it was going to be three months before I could make the payment. But before, because it went so fast, I said, listen, <sighs> I'm just going to take this 5,000 and I'm going to step back out of the deal. They're going to start making the payments now. Wow. So you get money now wow. in three months. Wow. But like I said, these sellers weren't equipped to be landlords. Oh, wow. And, and that's one thing that like when, when, when you're talking, I'm, I'm hearing so many, so many years and I know you have many different stories and I know as far as <laughs> so many stories of actually how, how, how things were happening, how you invested in property, some things that went wrong, some things that went great as well. But one thing I want my listeners to get from this is that investing in real estate in real estate is definitely viable, but you must have someone to guide you along the way. Um, Whitney, one philosophy I subscribe to is either you're going to learn, you're going to learn in three different ways. You're going to learn through mentorship, modeling, or mistakes. Oh yeah. Mentorship. Yeah. And, 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 and I prefer to have a combination of mentorship and modeling and because we, like, instead of just going out and trying and trying and trying, because mistakes can be very costly. So what I'm going to do, we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back to this right here because I want you to go through and talk to our audience on the, the importance of having proper mentorship and modeling different systems so they can avoid a lot of costly mistakes. So we're going to take a few minutes to thank our sponsors and then we're going to come back and the next voice we're going to hear is Whitney. The moon is up, sitting alone. All right, again, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, again, before we left, we, we stopped on mentorship, modeling, and mistakes. And that's one thing I really wanted Whitney to go through and actually talk about the importance. A lot of entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs or people that are on, on this journey, they choose the road traveled by many, which is mistakes, instead of the road traveled by less, which is finding a proper mentor and modeling that mentor. So Whitney, go through and talk, talk about like, maybe kind of walk us through the path on, on, on your process. Cause like both of us, we've invested in mentors and, and, and process, et cetera, but kind of walk us on that path and then kind of walk us on the path of why is it, why it's so important to have a mentor and to model that mentor. So this goes to the first time people thought I was really crazy and like needed to go to the loony bin uh -huh. because my mom had always been a real estate investor. So naturally people thought, well, you'll just use your mom. She'll teach you everything she knows and you'll be a real estate investor. But my mom does things the old and slow way where she saves mm -hmm. up a bunch of money, buys whatever she can, saves up a bunch of money, buys whatever she can, and then she gets mailbox money. Mm -hmm. And she has no formula. She's got no strategy. She's just throwing spaghetti on the wall. And once mm. I realized that she was just like winging it, mm. I was wow. like, oh no, I need, I need something. I need somebody wow. and I want to do lease options. And my mom didn't know what lease options were. She couldn't teach me about lease options. Uh -huh. And it's funny now I've done like 54 of them and she's like, Hey, can you work out one of those? Things? <laughs> what, what is that thing that you do that the people call you about? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, uh, you know, it's really cool. My mom has been investing for like 40 years. I'm not going to tell you how old she is, but like more, longer than I've been alive. She's 41. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have more houses than she does. Wow. I have some apartments, but my mom has a landfill, so she's got me beat on that one. Exactly. So it, brings, it brings her 10 grand a month. So Wow. Until, wow. Until I get something that brings 12 grand a month for it, the clear. She's one up to you. She's winning. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so, so, so uh, with that, my thing is, what, what, what do you see? I know you have uh, a program where you're mentoring um, individuals that are looking to become real estate investors. What are, what are, what are some things that, that you see that's so important? What, what are some barriers that you see that a lot of people, 
they have or perceived um, barriers that they may have on the reason why they won't invest in themselves. And just like many people, and I will say this, many people, they will go through and choose to spend $40,000, $50,000, $100,000 in a college education and let that be the last time they invest in themselves in, for their lifetime. But they have a barrier of actually going through and investing in themselves, trying to find a mentoring, a mentor or finding a program that they can go through and invest in to go through and, and, and give way more returns in a college education. So what are some things that, that you would go through and say to individuals that are looking to find a mentor, uh, a mentor or a modeling program? So my first mentor, I paid $30,000. After I graduated college, wow. and I, I put 15000 down on just a mentor, mm -hmm. and I paid for boot camps, I paid for programs, I traveled all over the country to learn how to do this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's when they were like, you are crazy, that's a waste of money. My husband told me when he was my boyfriend that I had church camp mentality, <laughs> and I was just going to learn all this stuff at this boot camp, and then it was never going to work. Mm -hmm. So I give him a little bit of that for breakfast every morning. Of course you have to. <laughs> um, so I, I started out. And it was really, I was on my sixth deal before he was like, I think you're on to something. Wow. Like six deals in. Not wow. the first deal. He thought it was a fluke. Uh -huh. Not the second one. The sixth deal. The si he was like, I think this is going to work. I think wow. you've got something going on. Mm -hmm. So the problem is you do pay for college. Mm -hmm. And then you got to pay back college yeah. uh -huh. or you you know you feel grateful that you don't have any mm -hmm. college debt mm -hmm. but somewhere in high school and college we really develop our pride mm -hmm. and we've been told our whole life that we need to go to college get an education get a job get a 401k white picket fence and done and done that's not how it works mm -hmm. anymore and you have to keep going I mean, college is like regular everybody you know these yep. days has a college degree you Correct. have to do something else to set yourself apart correct so i tell people that it's mostly pride mm. that gets in their way mm -hmm. and they're really curious they really want to know what's going on they really want to get into what i'm doing but they let their pride get in the way because as adults mm -hmm. we like to know what's going on mm -hmm. we like to be in charge we're mm -hmm. parents we're uh, supervisors, mm -hmm. you know, we've got these things going on and mm -hmm. it's really hard to step back into a kindergartner's shoes and wow. say, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I, pa I pause right there. What, 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 what was it difficult? I don't know. You said you, you, you found a mentor and you invested in yourself for a mentor. Was it difficult for you to submit to the process? Did, did, did you go in with the preconceived notion where, you know what, I have a background in real estate. Hey, I just, I just need to get just what, what I need out and I have the rest. Or did you come in and submit and say, you know what? Hey, I'm going all in. Estate license and I went to an owner financing boot camp mm -hmm. and I thought if you had a real estate license you knew everything about real estate I had never heard of these words these terms all these people are talking about these six-figure deals that wow. they've done and they do one or two of these a month oh wow and I'm going I don't care how silly I look I don't care how many mistakes I make mm -hmm. I'm gonna figure this out I'm gonna be one of those people making six figures a month Wow Wow. And so I, and I, I guess I am kind of childlike and I don't care to check it and be like, no, I have no idea what you're saying. Can you dumb that down for me? I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'll be the first to tell you like this whole technology thing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a millennial. I should have technology like, <laughs> you know, everywhere. And I, can, I just don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> like it. I don't want to figure it out. I want to hire somebody to do it. Exactly. And I want to go do real estate because the technology, I mean, we, I love Facebook. Exactly. I love my email. I love all this stuff. But actually, huh? we don't need it. Wow. Wow. We need a house. Mm -hmm. We need to be warm and we need food. Wow. And all this other stuff is distractions and it's fun. And I, I mean, I make money off Facebook. I buy houses off Facebook. Exactly. Like, I need it to make money, but... We don't actually need it like we need real estate. Real estate isn't a fad. Real mm -hmm. estate isn't something that's going to go away. And if you can figure out how to buy houses without getting a mortgage, without somebody running your credit, and without having a whole lot of money involved, mm -hmm. I mean, I tell people, if, if it takes $100 to buy a house, how many can you buy this week? Wow. 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 That's amazing. And, and, and Whitney, that's amazing because... You have been and like you know, like we're we're both millennials. I look I'm probably I probably look not like a millennial with all this gray hair, <laughs> but I'm a millennial. So so with that being said, and, and I know we 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 we're tech savvy or we uh, try to be try to incorporate technology etc. But 
just like you said, it doesn't take all the technologies to go through. It just have to take, it, it takes the know-how, it takes the discipline, it takes those things that are intangible to go through and actually go through and actually invest in real estate. And that's one thing I really want our audience to go through and understand that you don't have to know everything. You don't have to know how to program this and build this website and do this widget and do the marketing and all. you just have to be passionate about what you're passionate about. And I know you guys are seeing Whitney's passion as well as far as when, when it comes to real estate. Whitney invests, and she, I, know, I know she utilized different, different mediums to go through and get a message out, but you, you didn't hear about those mediums. You heard about her passion. And that's one thing that I think that entrepreneurs have to realize. You have to fall back in love with your passion because that's going to go through and make the provision as well. So I'm excited about that. Whitney, but before we end this, because I know so many of our listeners, they, they're like, yeah, yeah, but you have to have credit. You have to have this and this and this. Whitney, Come to debunk this myth. Inform us about the whole credit thing, all right? Okay, so when regular agents talk about listing a house and they're representing buyers, the market of Americans that can go to the bank, go to a mortgage broker, have their credit run, put money down, and buy a house, mm -hmm. it's like 18% of Americans wow. that are pretty enough on paper that they can get it done. So 18 out of 100. 18 out of 100. And sometimes that's because a lot of us are small business owners and bankers and mortgage brokers don't like that. Correct. They like you to work for a big corporation. They mm -hmm. see safety. In exactly. It. Oh, and I you don't know, see any safety in no, that. You, no, buddy. <laughs> um, uh, and so you need good credit. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you can go to the hospital and not have enough insurance. You could have, you know, an accident on the job site and they didn't have enough workers' comp insurance mm -hmm. and it came back on you. You could have your credit ruined because of you were sick. Mm -hmm. You could have your credit ruined because people tell me all the time that their ex-husband or their ex-wife was bad with credit and they ran know the credit card and blah, 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 blah. Exactly. So it could be something that you don't know mm -hmm. that ruins your credit. Um, uh, also, it could be that you were an entrepreneur and say you were a real estate investor during the height of the last recession mm -hmm. and you lost your tail. Wow. And you had to file bankruptcy. So mm -hmm. now you've got seven years. So a lot of the people that lost their tail in the last recession – they're just coming out of bankruptcy where they could go get a mortgage again. Well, what do you think those people have been doing for seven years? Mm. They've been figuring out how to buy houses without using their credit. Yes, yes. So so it doesn't actually take perfect credit to go through and buy houses nowadays. I've done 54 deals. I have, I think, 18 or 19 houses. I need to count them. Uh -huh. And I don't have my name on a mortgage for any of those. No bank has run my credit, and I haven't put any money down except, you know, maybe 480 bucks. Wow. Wow. Which isn't hardly enough to, you know. Exactly. So that means if you're working a typical job, and you can anybody can afford $480. Yep. Wow. Whitney, one thing I say that this is something that I really want our entrepreneurs to go through and realize the importance of investing in real estate. If you plan on doing it for a career or just to go through and know, what, know that you can provide a family, a home for your family, I want them to understand that. I think you were chiming in. Well, a lot of the times, too, you know, like we talked about my $480 house. Even if I don't do a lease option on that, mm -hmm. I can rent that house for $800 a month. Wow. And every entrepreneur is looking for another way to bring in some money. And if I've got somebody else in this house and they're paying me 800 bucks a month and I owe, let's say, $500 a month, $480, $500, mm -hmm. that means I get $300 extra a month. Exactly. But if I could wait and use my my real job mm -hmm. my you know regular one and i could put that extra 300 towards that principal mm -hmm. i'll pay that house off in five years wow and then i'll have a free and clear house bring me 800 dollars a month and 10 of those is an extra eight grand a month in whitney and I want people to realize, because so many times people, and I'm, I'm going to pause right there. A lot of entrepreneurs, they say, you know, I want to be a millionaire. I want to do this. Every, that's great and dandy, but it doesn't take a million dollars to go through and transform a life. $8,000 per month can go through and transform a life. It, it, can, it, it should be able to give freedom to one or whatever your level of freedom is and responsibilities. But those are the things right there where you can go through and start small and just be steady along the way. And then you can go through and realize some dreams. That's amazing. I want my students to do one house a month. And mm -hmm. if they get $200 a month off of that, you know, I teach them how to get ten, fifteen, forty thousand dollars $40,000 up front so they get some money in. Mm -hmm. But I want them to build that residual. So if they get $200 a month, that's fine. But if they do one house a month, and just one house a month is like not even part time. Oh, wow. It, it's like, you know, 10 or 20 hours a month, mm -hmm. like five or six hours a week. Mm -hmm. 
So if you do $200 a month on the very low end, by the end of the year, you're making an extra $2,400 a month. You do that again the next year. Now you're making an extra $5,000 wow. a month. Wow. And you've made big option fees in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't put 20 hours a week. Wow. Wow. It, that that's the retirement that's the new retirement like oh my gosh Whitney if people are not investing in real estate I mean they're missing so much so many times people try to go through and actually they, they, they look at real estate for someone else but again a steady process a steady flow that can just go through and build up to something amazing but before we leave Whitney I like to go through and actually go through 10 questions that my audience submit so it's just 10 random questions that individuals I haven't written down as well that 10 people that actually um that actually submit and just take a few moments to give me some short answers as well so the first one was how young were you when you first knew that you were an entrepreneur I was in the third grade and I made little keychains. You know, we used to braid little things or we'd get these plastic things and you'd make them and I'd sell them and then we'd have to go to Walmart and then had all my girlfriends help them make them. We had slumber parties. What? <laughs> that is, that is so, It was the third grade, but I was the fourth generation entrepreneur. My great grandfather started this trucking company in mm -hmm. 1939 wow. and I worked for the trucking company. Uh, for seven years mm -hmm. before I started doing real estate full time. Wow, wow, wow. How, and I'm going to go off script. How, how important is it for children? How important is it for parents to go through and emulate what, 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 they, what they want their children to duplicate? So how important is it for, for parents to go through and be the example for their children? Because so many times people are, my, I want my daughter's son to be a doctor, but what are you doing? <laughs> or I want my, go okay, ahead. So my, my mom, like if I wanted to sell coupon books or mm -hmm. I want to sell Girl Scout cookies, my mom would give me a pad of paper and a pen and I would go to the neighbor's house. Wow. My mom didn't call everybody. I would get the phone book, the family phone book, mm -hmm. and I would call everybody in there and I would sell my Girl Scout cookies. I would sell my coupon books. Wow. Uh, you know, and then when they came in, my mom would drive me around, but I'd have to walk up to the door. Mm -hmm. And I see so many moms and dads now, like, my, my stepson sells sodas for their baseball team, mm -hmm. and my husband goes to work and sells all the sodas, and I'm like, well, what did they do? And he's like, wow. I mean, they play baseball. I'm like, <laughs> you're missing the lesson. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Like, I can't stand it. I won't buy sodas unless they ask me. Wow. That's, and that's, that's so amazing. It's so important, for, so important for parents to go through and be that example because that's where a child is going to go through and really learn these skills, learn how to go through and accept a no, how to, how to deal with rejection, how to go through and sell, how to, how to, how to be resilient. Those, that's so important. I love it. I love it. Uh, tell me, what's your favorite quote or what's your favorite saying? I love Proverbs 31, 16. And in East Tennessee, in the Southeast, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Like most of my friends, we want to be a Proverbs 31 yes. woman. She's a virtuous woman. Her husband is honored. She's respected by her children. But Proverbs 31, 16 says she goes to inspect the field and she buys it. Whoa. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Say, say, I know, say that again. I like that. It gets skipped over. I've got stacks of Bible studies. And there's, you know, paragraphs and pages and all, I mean, wow. all through Proverbs 31. But Proverbs 31, 16, there's usually a page. And it says, yeah, go buy real estate. Wow. And then 17... <laughs> but wow. Proverbs 31 16 says she goes to inspect the field and she buys it with her earnings she plants a vineyard oh my goodness that's enough right there that is enough <laughs> so you know and it doesn't say she goes to ask her husband there's mm. not an asterisk that says that she asks her dad if it's a good deal or borrows money she knows what she's doing and she goes to buy real estate and with her earnings she creates generational wealth for her kids and her kids and her kids. Whitney, I'm about to end this. In, good, <laughs> girl, I mean, like, that is real. Because I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and read this as well because that is the plan right there. It, let me, we're going to have another sidebar conversation with this. I, 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 I think our that. listeners have to realize that. And this is something that I, I have a young daughter. I have a one-year-old. And one thing I believe in female entrepreneurship. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy, of course. But my thing is, I believe that females are coming in like never before these women are coming in with a vengeance and saying you know what this is my this is the vineyard that we're going to go through and create we're going to create generational wealth and i believe that if guys don't go through and wake up you're going to go through and see i mean and and i'm i'm proud of that and i promote that and i support that and i'm just 
I, I'm gonna have to go back and read this verse because this is amazing. This is amazing. I use the uh, New Living Translation, and that's what it says. She goes to inspect the field and she buys it. Wow, ladies, go out there and buy it. Don't, 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 don't wait around. Don't wait around. Oh my gosh. That's the independent woman right there. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so my, my another question is: Do you have a do you have a daily routine? Like I know, like as an entrepreneur, like I have a preposition daily routine but i know sometimes here there and everything but do you have a daily routine that you follow i really get my panties in a wad if i can't go to the gym and have like an hour to myself mm. to process to mm. flow and like i try to get up early and go and do it and sometimes i get lazy and sometimes i have an extra glass of wine yes it yes of, of course but, <laughs> you know, i love that time and just like i hate getting up and going, but once I'm there and I do, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, mm -hmm. but I feel so much better and wow. I'm so much energized and it just, it really makes a difference in my work and my attitude yeah. and everything for the rest of the day if, or if I don't mm -hmm. go to the gym. So that, and that's, that's the one thing that I would say that I really strive to do wow. and everything else falls apart. Wow, wow, wow. So what, what 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 do you do like what besides all that, as entrepreneurs we like to wear so many hats and we're driven. We can That's work 24 problem, 80 hours a day. What do you do for Whitney? What 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 what's your hobby like? How do you stress relief? Like what what do you what do you enjoy? I uh, my husband and I do Netflix marathons. Nice. Oh, yes. And so I, I usually double task and uh, try to find somebody who's ranting and raving on Facebook so that I can write a blog or exactly. while I'm watching, we're watching Mad Men right now. Exactly. Um, so I do that. I, I love auctions, mm -hmm. even if I'm not buying anything. Exactly. I just like to go and be around people. Yes. Um, another thing that I really enjoy is going to these conferences. Like we're all so social online that it's really important to go to whatever is ha happening. Yes, yes. If you're interested in something, go. And I'm kind of getting bad that I go and figure out who's, like, doing it. Yes. And then I hire them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> to just do whatever it is they're doing mm -hmm. for me. Exactly. And my coaching and, or to help my students. Yes. Or, you know, whatever. And I can't go to real estate seminars anymore because I ended up walking out. And <laughs> Look, you can't take it anymore. <laughs> that that is... Exactly. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> but you know what? That is so funny. And, 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 and I believe that I'm going to cut our, our, our questions kind of short right here. But I believe that you have really helped a lot of entrepreneurs on today. I believe that I, I want you to go through, give some type of advice, give a part of piece of advice that you would give to an entrepreneur who's just starting off, regardless of they're investing in real estate, tech, whatever they're investing in. What advice would you give an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur who's just starting off? a bad day you have to keep going mm -hmm. something is going to change and a lot of times especially in real estate letting it rest is very important when you cook if you cook a steak mm -hmm. there's a rest time wow. you don't have to cook it until you put on the plate and eat it you cook it you let it rest and then you eat it wow. and a lot of times that's how real estate is too when everybody gets their feathers ruffled up sometimes if you can just step away which is so mm -hmm. hard exactly as yes as entrepreneurs we're control freaks and we want to fix it right now Sometimes by just taking a breather and stepping back, it fixes itself. Wow. Wow. But keep going. Keep going. Do not give up on your dream. Oh, wow. please don't give up on your dream. Don't go back to that nine to five. If it gets bad and you have to go get a nine to five, you have to go work at Target for a couple of weeks just to rebound and pay rent. Do it, but yes. don't give up your night hustle too. Wow, wow, wow. There you have it, guys. It's been Whit Whitney Nicely has been really dropping a lot of nuggets. And I know that our <laughs> listeners are taking a lot of information. I know they've been taking notes, and that's one thing I really want them to do. But Whitney, how could they go through and reach out to you? Because I think you bring so much value to the industry. I think you bring so much value to individuals that are investors as well. So how can they reach out? How can they follow you? How can they reach out? What are some things that they can do to kind of take action? Because that's what I want them to do to take action today. So how can they reach out to you and actually follow you? My website is WhitneyNicely.com. Whitney like Houston, nicely like nicely done.com. Okay. Or uh, you can go, if you're on Facebook, I'm doing a 40-day challenge, 40 live videos in 40 days. Okay. And I'm trying to get my Facebook following up to 4,000 people. Okay. So if you'll go to Facebook.com slash Coach Whitney Nicely. That's my public page. Got and it. I'm doing 40 real estate videos. And some of them are going to stay up. But some of them, I'm going to do the video and then put it in my course. And you'll never see it again unless wow. you sign up. 
They got to get it. Got to get it. Well, I'm going to definitely include this in the show notes. I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much for actually coming on the show. Thank you so much for dropping so many golden nuggets. Guys, if you haven't reached out to her, again, go to her website, follow her on Facebook, and definitely do take action. Take massive action today. Again, thank you so much, Whitley, and I'll definitely see you guys really soon. Thank you.